I will so, start. Mark, we're, we're recording. Okay, yeah. great. Um, I will start the select board meeting for February 1st, 2021, um, 7 p.m. We have four members, so we can start our meeting. Um, first motion I'd like to ask is for an approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? A second. I'd like to add one item uh, as B under select board items, just a little update on the board education. Um, so I'm just going to add that under B if that's okay with everybody. Um, hold on a minute. Let, I'm taking minutes here. So um, this is under select board items, you said? Yeah, I just uh, add an item B. Uh, board items. Uh, B, and that will be to discuss uh, the education and training for the board for anti racism and inclusion training. Mark, along that line, before we started, can I just make a statement if I can? Sure. Should I do it now? Um, I guess you maybe, I don't know if we want to make a statement at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, you could do it under the public forum. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So uh, for, for, hold on a minute, Mark. I, sorry, I'm trying to catch up here. Um, so, Katie, you made the motion to approve the agenda now. Did you second? I did. Thanks. Okay. I, okay, I'm good, Mark. Okay. Um, is there anyone, as long as everyone's okay with those changes, um, can I get... Uh, do we have to remake a motion? I can't remember if we make a change. Um, I, can, I can just uh, I make a motion to the, approve the agenda for tonight's meeting with the addition uh, of discussion on board sensitivity training and a public statement. Great, thank you. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Hi. Uh, consent agenda items. Minutes from January 25th meeting and liquor licenses for Kinney Drugs and Woodstock Farmers Market. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, public? I'll let Tom go first. I saw Tom has his hand up. Well, if, if somebody else wants to go, that's fine. Is there someone else in line? Nope, I was just going to make a statement, but okay. you want to go first or I can go, go ahead. ahead? If you're all prepared, go ahead. Okay, it's just a quick thing, although it's very important. I just want to say, um, make an apology at the last uh, select board meeting. I used a term that was not appropriate and I am extremely sorry for it, especially because I was the one that brought up the uh, in inclusion mis mission statement for our town. But during that discussion, I used the word lynch mob, which was an inappropriate term. And it wasn't in reference to a formal lynch mob, it, it, it was my saying that there was a piling on and it was had no reference to what the term lynch mob was. And I am, uh, it's regrettable that I said that, I learned a lesson. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna be sending something into our local publications with a, also a formal uh, apology. So I do apologize and I'm sorry for that. And I guess more formally, we'll have, I'll have something in writing that the whole community can see. Thank you. You might. Um, Tom. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, just curious if the select board has gotten anything from Frank Spaulding for tonight because he had said that he 
needed to make a pitch uh, to Bill and the select board and by the end of January. So I'd like an update on, on if anyone knows what the process is and where we are in the process, if there is a process regarding the uh, multi-use area. This was in reference to the, um, the disc golf course. Right, the multi-use area. Yeah, or yes, the multi-use area. Um, I have not heard any updates um, and without Bill on the line or our rec coordinator, I don't know of anything. Um, does anyone else on the call know of any updates? I do not, I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Um, I know, um, Tom, this meeting was put on last minute to address the um, interim zoning bylaws. So this meeting last, as of last week wasn't supposed to take place, but I know we can certainly get it on the agenda and get an update and have that discussion um, on our next meeting. Um, but I personally don't know of any. Okay, any well, I appreciate that. I just... Uh... There may be decisions uh, being made with some group input, but if it's being forwarded without being visible to the people that uh, have been involved in the discussion, I hope that's not happening. And um, that would be great if it all sort of comes public and there's a chance to discuss whatever whatever is being proposed. Um, one of the things that, that is difficult is this is the slowest use period of the course. So whatever observations are being made aren't really relevant to May and June. Um, and if we're, if, if collectively, including the select board, um, people wanna try and get this right, we have an opportunity to get it right now, um, as opposed to like 2009, 2010, when all of this um, was already gone through in great detail, changes were made, Many parties were involved, and yet here we are, you know, hammering on it again. So I guess I just would like to see um, and the process be very public and very um, have it be very inclusive. So uh, I'm glad to know that that there's not some other discussion happening tonight. And if uh, there can be some collective thought around it and a part of the next meeting, that would be great. I can follow up with Bill, um, but as, yeah, as far as I know, is that something that you heard Nick might be working on? Is that who you would heard? No, that's what, that's what Frank has put out to the committee that he needed to have a pitch for Bill by the end of January. So I, I don't know what that means because whatever the pitch is hasn't been shared. So um, okay. I just felt like if there was something that was coming to a conclusion tonight, I wanted to hear whatever it might be. Okay. No, I, as far as I know, that's not anything that's on tonight's discussion. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you for thank you, Tom. informing me. All right. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Um, Tom. Is there anyone else on the call that'd like to speak during the public session? All right. We'll move on to select board items discuss process of adopting in term zoning bylaws and consider calling a public meeting. So Mark, would you like me to introduce this topic? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so this is a follow-up to uh, the request that the select board made at your meeting, I believe on January 4th to um, have interim bylaws uh, for the downtown zoning district prepared uh, as soon as possible. So in uh, follow-up discussions um, that was agreed to um, have um, a draft uh, completed and to you by the end of January, that was the direction that I got from, uh, from Bill Shepelock. So uh, I sent you all a draft on uh, Saturday evening. And um, so um, I've been working with the Planning Commission on this draft. And um, so um, 
I can't speak for the planning commission. Uh, I was directed as staff to, to prepare this draft. So they may, they will probably have some um, additional uh, comments on the draft, which is, which is fine. So uh, the goal this evening is um, to discuss it. And uh, my request uh, or recommendation is that the select board schedule a date for a public hearing to um, receive public comment. We'll warn that in both the Times Argus and the, the um, Waterbury Reader. And we'll get the draft on our website, the draft that I, I sent to you along with the map and um, open this up for public comment. Uh, we have to warn the hearing for a minimum of 15 days. And uh, we could warn a hearing for February, Monday, February 22nd, uh, if the planning, if the plan, sorry, if the select board um, uh, desires. It is a regular planning commission night. Um, I've told the planning commission I could meet with them on March 1st, uh, Monday, March 1st, if um, they would want to uh, schedule, either postpone the meeting or have an additional meeting on March 1st. But that would give us time to um, warn it in the newspaper. We'd uh, probably warn it uh, this Thursday. I'd have to check on the, on the Waterbury Reader that might be, um, we may not be able to get, give the full 15 day warning, but we could certainly put an article in the Waterbury Reader uh, about the public hearing, but it would meet our statutory requirement to have it in the paper of record, which is the, uh, the Times Argus, uh, at least 15 days before the hearing. Um, otherwise, uh, I know <clears throat> normally you don't meet on the Monday before uh, town meeting, which as I understand is by Australian ballot this year. Um, so when I talked to Bill Shepelock about it, um, I think he also felt that uh, February 22nd would be a, um, a good option. Otherwise, uh, we'd be looking at, at March. Um, your next um, regular scheduled meeting in March would be the 15th, I believe. In your next scheduled meeting in February, we don't have time to uh, to warn a hearing. So that um, uh, with that, I'll I'll let all of you discuss it. Ask any questions that you might. Uh, yeah, just just so the board knows, this is why we had to meet tonight was how the timing worked out with uh, town meeting. That if we didn't meet, then it would have pushed this back significantly. So unfortunately, I appreciate everyone um, taking the time to come to the meeting tonight. Um, Steve, just so I'm clear, it's not just changes to the, and I'm, I think I am, um, the, the laws themselves, the bylaws themselves, but also you're asking for the map change at the same time. That's correct. The part of the, um, the draft interim bylaws is an amendment to the district that would expand the district. I've got the map on the computer. If you want me to share the screen, if you're if you're interested in seeing the extent of that, it's a it's a modest expansion. It's it's the downtown zoning district that is recommended. In the way this is structured, it's the. Um, can everybody hear me? All right. I'm getting a message that my internet's unstable. Good. So uh, it's. It's a modest expansion, which is recommended in the Unified Development Bylaw. It includes the buildings on Foundry Street, the end of Foundry Street, and it uh, extends the district down to the uh, more or less the first drive into the uh, state complex at the Big Horseshoe. If you're interested in looking at the map, I can certainly bring that up. Does anyone need the map? I have it on my computer right now. I don't know if anyone else needs it. Yeah, I, I have it on mine. I have it on mine too. Yeah, the, the, pub, the public does doesn't necessarily have it, so if you want me to screen share, I can. Uh, Steve, this is Dana Allen. If you could share that really quick, that'd be really interesting. Thank you. Sorry, Dana, I didn't think I didn't see you in there. Oh, we got Jason and Danny. Okay. So. Uh, this is the 
this is the map. Um, I can try to enlarge the downtown area if you just bear with me a minute. So uh, I'm just outlining the district, um, the proposed district. It's the pink area. And uh, this is um, North Main, South Main, Stowe Street. Maybe I can enlarge it a little bit more. Um, hold on just a minute, bear with me. Now that you can see pretty much where it is. Okay, I think this will be easier for you to, to see. Everybody see that okay? up on your screen as well. Here's Stowe Street, um, North Main, South Main. Um, this is um, the, um, the gas station. The gas station, top of bank, the uh, former water, water medical associates. Then it goes down to Warren Court, just before Warren Court and um, this is the horseshoe in front of the state complex. And, um, and this is the last building here. I think it's maybe, I, I'd be guessing, but it basically goes past the end of Moody Court. And then the railroad tracks border it on this side. It just takes in the, basically the lots fronting uh, North and South Main Street on the south side or the river side. Oh, now I just enlarged it again, so. Steve, can you say why the lots that include the town offices aren't included in the downtown or the proposed downtown? It seems like that's out of the floodplain. It's a safer place for future development and why, you know, that would have the same zoning as, as the part of Stowe Street that's over the bridge near the school. Mark, you're talking about Parker Court, the houses behind the um, whatever no, service center? I'm talking about, um, <clears throat> if you go up on your map a little bit, I'm talking about the basically all the properties north of, of what is now the intersection of Stowe Street and Main that um, include the town offices, I believe, like basically down through Winooski Street, where your mouse is if you go up. Yeah, just past that area, the part that's yellow, why that? This is the Congregational Church right here. Yeah. Or this, that's not in the district. This is the current boundary of the downtown right. commercial. I guess I'm just wondering why, if we are expanding the... Oh, map. you're talking about down, all the way down this, this direction. Correct, because yeah. you know, you're out of the flood, you're out of the flood zone. It seems like it would be a smarter area to try to expand the downtown as well versus going farther down past Park Row in an area that might be more apt to flood. It just seems like, it, I don't really understand the difference between the Park Street area and that area north of what is now the downtown. Right, so this area is as proposed in the Unified Development Bylaw is a mixed use district, which um, allows development at a somewhat lower density. So um, I think the, the rationale behind it is that the downtown, uh, current downtown commercial district and the proposed downtown zoning district <coughs> that shows here is a very high density district. Uh, we're not really recommending any, um, any maximum density for residential use. There are a lot of commercial uses. The buildings can be very tall. So it's, it's really defining the core downtown area. This mixed use district, uh, which takes in a lot of the current village mixed residential um, has uh, larger setbacks. It has larger lot sizes, uh, a more modest density. So, um, and, and there are there are light industrial uses that would be allowed in this district, including a food and beverage production, light industry, and so on. And we don't really want to have those uses in these other areas. I think it would could be potential conflict. There are single family homes in those areas and so on. So this is um, 
the way that the, this has been been structured. I think we'll have another phase of the unified development bylaw that will, you know, where we'll address these these other areas along North and South Maine. Okay. And then tonight we, like you said in an email, we're not necessarily discussing the details of the actual proposal as much as just do we want to move forward with the warning and get in the meeting where we can discuss things in more detail, correct? Correct. I think, um, right, right. We want to get this draft out to the public and make it widely available and um, then give people an opportunity to really look it over, ask, you know, they can call me, ask questions, uh, provide you with comments, either written comments or comments at the public hearing. And then with interim bylaws, just to go over the, the, the process, um, you have to warn a public hearing. Then once you've taken public comment, close the hearing, you can make uh, changes or what we call substantive changes to the draft at that point. Um, you can adopt it either at that meeting or a subsequent meeting and the bylaws are effective immediately. So it's really interim bylaws are designed to um, deal with an urgent uh, situation like we have with the pandemic uh, that we had with Tropical Storm Irene and, and so on. So um, that, that's, it's, an, it's an expedited uh, process. So right, I think the goal tonight would be, uh, or my recommendation would be to schedule a public hearing and then we can um, you know, really dive into all these issues in a lot more detail at the hearing when the public's adequately warned and invited. Okay. Um, how about the other board members? Well, I, I have, um, I went through the draft in pretty much detail. I think it, it was a really good stab, but I guess a lot of my questions are the devils in the details. And if we're not discussing that, I, I don't know, you know, maybe we should go to a public meeting first. You know, maybe I have comments that would be specifically related to that I may refer to Steve and the planning commission. I don't know, would that be the way, you know, we as select board people should proceed, Steve? Well, <laughs> um, I think, you know, without a consensus of the board on, on changes that you would want to make, my recommendation would be to warn this draft and then uh, take comment and, and provide your own questions and comments as well. Right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is um, like any bylaw amendment process. We, we want your involvement. Uh, if you would like to, you know, approach me or, or the planning commission for that matter, they're, they're meeting next Monday and they're gonna have a further discussion about this draft. Um, so, you know, there's some opportunities there, but um, you can certainly ask me directly, you know, I've spent a lot of time on this draft and trying to put it into a, a form that's, um, you know, where, where I see that it's, uh, it's near final, but um, yeah, and your prerogative is certainly to, yeah. uh, or your, your role is certainly to make uh, further changes, but it would need to be something agreed to by the board. So, so maybe that would be the appropriate thing is to attend your next you, next week's um, planning commission meeting and presents, you know, I, I, I could get, you know, just to the planning commission, you know, just some comments in, in general for them maybe to respond to. But, that, would, that would be up to you. I mean, it's really, you know, it's been put in your hands. So Right. How, how you want to involve the planning commission is is entirely up to you. You know, we want them involved. They have been involved, um, you know, up to the point of this getting this draft out and there they will be it will be on their agenda for next Monday as well. And I appreciate I really appreciate how quickly you've gotten to this. That's I never expected it to come out this quick. So thank you on but at least on behalf of myself and I assume the rest of the select board, I think we're pretty pleased that something came out in a fairly, you know, quick time. Yeah, I, I, I second that for sure. Um, I have another comment, but I don't, I don't want to jump in front of anyone else. 
you, do you want me to take down the map for now? Yeah, I think you, I think you can take down you the can map. Have, at this a, point of, have a discussion. Oh, I've got to get everybody's names here too for the minutes. Okay. Um, Steve, when it comes to the process, and maybe I, I maybe you already said it just now, that what is warned can be changed in the public meeting, but making changes during that public meeting, do those delay anything or is that a typical part of the process? And then does it go back to the select board for final approval? Right, uh, so, so you would hold a public meeting, get public comment, uh, take in any written comments that had been submitted prior to the hearing or during the hearing. And then um, typically you would close the hearing. You could continue it if you chose to do that. And then after you close it, um, then you can make subsequent uh, changes, modifications to the draft. And uh, then if you, if you all agree on that and have a motion to adopt, then uh, your final draft in essence is what is adopted. So that, that is the process. And that can happen in the same night or is it typically? It can, it, it certainly can if you choose to do that, correct. Okay. And then what's, you know, for example, if we have feedback on this, when we warn, if there are changes between the warning and the actual meeting, that's okay? Or do we need to come to the meeting with what was warned? Well, my, yeah, we have to post a draft for you to warn. Um, and that, that's available to the public. So, uh, so I've sent you a draft, it's dated tonight. If you choose, you can um, warn that draft. It's, it's not, it doesn't have to be what's finally adopted. It can, it can be changed, that's your prerogative. So, uh, but there, there would need to be a draft uh, published in essence we don't put the whole draft in the newspaper, but we make it available on our website. It's available here, paper copies I can give to people and so on. So that, that would be the process, correct? Steve? Yeah. Would it make sense? I am, I'm just speaking out loud. Uh, for any of us in the select to actually approval tonight, uh, to any of us who did have kind of questions or additions or comments, make them to you and the planning commission, attend the planning commission, then the planning commission at their, you know, you know, your request, you kind of dwell upon what the feedback was and possibly amend the draft. And then we come back on our next select board meeting to, you know, go forward. I don't know if that's going to set the timing off too much. Well, yeah, I think if the planning commission has recommended changes to this draft, they they could formulate them on the on the eighth or formulate them before you have the hearing and and bring you know bring revisions to the hearing. That's that's fine. Um, okay. I think. I think the select board's role is is to hear the public comment, and right. then and then make your own decisions about how to move forward with the draft. So, um, so I think the, the the select board wouldn't want to make any um, any formal action on any changes. I think until you've heard all the public comment, you get that whole body of comment, including further co comments that the planning commission may have. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, then go from there. That that would be, I think, the best process. Yeah, I'm all for um, warning a meeting. Um, I think that people need to be able to comment on this and, and add their input. I, I would echo what Nat said. And I would also thank you, Steve, and the rest of the commission for working on this. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing more comments and opinions from the public. and just acknowledging uh, Jason, I, at least I have read your email and what you have said is interesting and I can't wait for more input from the community on this. Yeah, I would, I, would, I, I echo those comments and I agree that I think we should warn this and get it in front of the public and get public comment and 
continue this process. I think it's been a long time in the making and I would hate to see any additional delay. Um, so I would entertain a motion if the board is ready. Before you, we have a motion, what, what does the board think about the possibility of, of warning hearing for um, this 22nd? As I mentioned, we can get it in the Times Argus. For the Waterbury Reader, we wouldn't put a 15-day warning, but we would probably, you know, work with Lisa, work with you, Lisa, and get an article um, in the, you know, in the Waterbury Reader as soon as we could about it. And you said that was a planning commission meeting night as well, typically. Well, it is. It it is. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, unfortunately or unfortunately, I guess it, it you're right. It would be their normal meeting night. Uh, I've talked about it a bit with Ken and Mary, and um, I've told them I was I would be available March first if they chose to meet uh, March March first, or they could choose to meet. You know, I would I would expect to staff your your meeting, but it depends on how quickly you want to move this to a public hearing. That's the soonest we could hold a public hearing. I think that's the bottom line. Otherwise, it would have to be, you know. March 1st, you typically don't meet the evening before town meeting, which is an Australian ballot vote this year. Um, otherwise it would have to be in, in March sometime. Yeah, I, I'm in support of the 22nd. I don't know if the rest of the board has an opinion. Uh, I'm in favor for that. Is that gonna be at seven o'clock or at a different time? My suggestion would be to make it 7.15. You could take care of your other regular business, uh, the first items that you usually have on the agenda first, and then uh, warn it for 7.15 on, on Monday, February 22nd. I guess I'm a little confused because if I'm not mistaken, our next meeting is the 16th. That, that's correct, Mike. We, we don't have time to warn the public right, hearing for the 16th. Okay, so you're saying having a special select board meeting for the 22nd. Right, we, it would be a special meeting, exactly. Just, now, just making sure I heard right. Yeah, you could, no, okay, that's good to discuss. I mean, Bill's not here, so I'm kind of playing the administrative role, but um, you could delay your meeting on the 15th to the 22nd if you chose to do that. I don't know that there's anything urgent for, uh, Bill did mention that as an option rather than meeting three times this month, you could move, shift your meeting. We could cancel the meeting on on um, February 15th and hold it on the 22nd instead. Um, then you could take care of your regular business first and do the hearing at 715. You know, this will probably involve some time for a hearing and maybe working out any for subsequent details, but that's that's a, a possibility. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be in support of moving that. <laughs> meeting and merging it to the 22nd. Me too. Did everybody see Lisa's comment in the in the chat about the paper and the notice? Yeah, Steve, does that work uh, then? Let, let me read it. Uh, hold so on a minute. She said uh, the reader could have a notice and or an article next week. This week's edition goes to press in the morning, FYI. Right, perfect. That's what I would do. I would work with Lisa on, uh, I can work with you, Lisa, on an article. Um, okay. That's fine. So that and still could, works within the time frame that we're talking about? That's well, probably. it would it would publicize the hearing. I think that's the important thing. It would help, yeah. you know, the reader goes to every mailbox in town, so plus some. So it's a great way to get the word out, and I'm all for that. Okay. Um, all right, so it sounds like everyone on the board is okay with the 22nd and we'll move our select board meeting to that day as well. At, at least that's the plan, but we would at, at minimum hold this meeting for the interim bylaws for the 22nd. Correct. Sounds like a so plan. I'll, I'll, I'll take a motion. So moved. Is there a second? So I heard Mike first. Second. Hang on a minute. So would the motion be to um, to warn a public hearing on um, the town of Waterbury inter interim bylaws for the downtown zoning district dated February 1st, 2020? Is that 
sound right, Mike? Yeah. I Getting think. a nod, okay. Uh, so it would be on um, Monday, February 22nd at 7.15. Does that sound good? Yep, and then uh, Katie second. Yep, got that. Okay. okay. Yep, um, got it. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the only other thing on the agenda I added at the beginning of the meeting, which is a follow up to an email um, maybe the other select board members received, but um, we hadn't followed up on the training for implicit bias for the, the board. And I know we talked about getting that training in before the board might change um, over come town meeting. So I called the Human Rights Council and they did say they might have availability in February, but I they didn't get back to me on what their availability might be. I know we discussed doing this training outside of our regular select board meetings. So I think what would be helpful is if the board could email me their availability and anything, any maybe any dates or times of the week that they would be unavailable. So I could try to figure out what would work. Um, I'd like to get all the board members to participate. Um, and it sounds like there's really no cost um, or that they just ask for a donation, but it's in the hundreds of dollars. So it's, I don't think we have to think about this as, as any kind of substantial cost, but I think it would be a really good thing for the board to do. And I'd like to see us do it before we um, have any changes of board seats. I think we also probably are going to have because we will we may have some changes on the board that those board members probably should be included in that kind of discussion. Yeah, I talked to the Human Rights Commission about doing an additional training sometime in the summer um, mm -hmm. with the new board members, um, knowing that Nat um, is not going to be back. So we know we're going to most likely have at least one change. So. Um, I think that makes the most sense, and I really do think we need to have one as soon as we can, and then plan for another one in the summer. And they, uh, the Human Rights Council, said that they they would be on board for that. Great. So you want us to email you our schedules for like the next week and a half or so? If you could just give me an idea of if days or nights are better, I'm assuming. This is a midweek thing. Um, just help me to try to coordinate some kind of schedule and I can reach out to Chris after I maybe see everyone else's schedule. So I, I'll, tr I'll try to do the best I can, but I might have to reach out to you guys. to, to figure would, they out. Be, would they be doing this training evenings as well as days? I believe so, but I'll, I'll confirm that. Um, but if you could just let me know if days are available and if not, and I tell them evenings, I'll see if that's an option. If not, we'll, we'll have to figure something out. And I, I'm also gonna talk with Bill about training within the town employees as well um, and what we are currently doing and, and how we might be able to include certain members of, of the town um, employment as well. At least managers, but if we can get as much yeah. participation, I think it's it's worthwhile. So um, more to come, but I just wanted to give an update to the board and start this process. So the different yeah. department directors, I think, are really critical to have as part of this conversation. <laughs> yep, and if we can't do it all together, if the board has to do a different time, but at least we can start to get everyone on schedule and and start to get the process in place for it. A, a regular training as we move forward so exactly okay. thank you for jumping on that mark yep no worries um okay i don't think we have anything else on the agenda this evening unless i missed something um so if nobody has anything else i'll take a motion to adjourn so moves. is there a second second all right. Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. I know we said we weren't going to meet tonight. So thank you for
for yeah, doing that. Th thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you meeting on short notice. Thank you for uh, helping run the meeting, Steve. Yes. <laughs> okay, you're, you're Steve, right yeah, welcome. Thanks. Well, thank you for Thank you for getting on this. Take minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'll get Carla to help me. I, I'm pretty good at it, but she'll, I'll, I'll get her to help me polish them up. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks Thank so much. Okay. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.